Um, I'm going to go ahead and get started, Adam, if you want to move to the next slide for me. Um, I want to, you guys have already met Katie. I asked Katie to talk about planning, executing successful meetings, and I'm going to turn it over to you, Katie. You're muted. I'm a professional. <laughs> Is there a way to share? Wait, do you want me to share my screen? I have a. Yeah, if you have so, yeah, if you have something, she can do that, can't she, Adam? She sure can. Um, I found it a while ago. Now I lost it. Um, <laughs> I will it stop. Here. Okay. Yep. You should take over the screen. It should work. Okay. I am almost ready. There we go. Maybe. Maybe I will. Okay, I'm gonna say okay, and then we're gonna do that. Okay, can you see it? I cannot. I see oh. your smiling face. Oh man. Okay. Well, then never mind. All right. <laughs> You're How okay. You... We'll wing it. We'll wing it. Do you wanna? Do you wanna give it a second chance? No. This is just what it's gonna be, and I can email that out. So we <laughs> we in Lubbock meet at noon and because of that it's very important and I'm sure you guys have the same issue it's very important for us to keep going in a timely manner and to be done in a timely manner so when I became president I decided that I wanted us to start at 10 after and to be done at 10 till so that those that work can come and they don't miss anything so that's what we do. Of course, we have a speaker sometimes that, that go late. And there's nothing we can do about that. But So first thing we do is we have a prayer. I'm getting lots of feedback. Is that me? Yeah, I'm, yeah we're hearing that. I got it. I, I, I muted the person. Is that better? Yeah. Yeah. Okay, good. Okay. And so what we do is we first start out with prayer requests and a prayer. And that's always fun. Call the meeting to order. We we welcome, you know, everybody to be here. We call the meeting to order. We have a prayer request and a prayer. And then we do the pledge. We pick a different member from our, our staff or our club every time to do that for us. And then we introduce our guests and present them with welcome packets which we want them to fill out immediately so that they are part of our club. We do that, then um, we do a business minute, which is we have somebody in our club explain how long they've been in there, what they do for a living, and, and what AMBEX means to them. And that's always a lot of fun because we have so many people in our club and a lot of people have been in for years and years and years since the 60s or 70s. And we <laughs> We don't know what they did before they retired, or we don't know what they do now. So today we had our the, our minute guy in a minute. He I knew he owned a hotel. I did not know he owned eight hotels. So <laughs> that was kind of cool. And I know him well. So that, that was neat. So that's always fun to learn something. If we have a new member, we'll do our induction then. When Carmela was at our meeting, we we did a couple of inductions, I believe. We played a video, and, and we we knew she was coming, but we weren't sure that she was coming until she showed up. So this was not because of her. We just it just happened to be. But um, we we had a video plan. We we inducted a new member. We um introduced all of our guests, and then we do our birthdays. We celebrate the birthdays for the week. And then we do our anniversaries and we do those for a week and then we make announcements and and we really like it when somebody tells us that they need to make an announcement prior to the meeting, but oftentimes that is not the case and somebody thinks of something off the cuff and we allow that to happen. We do committee reports, which those sometimes are lengthy about now because we're getting amped up for our fundraiser. So that usually will be two or three people giving a report on for summer fest. And then we'll do our program. So the plan is to have our program starting. And we gave away a trike too, didn't we, Carmela? So, so think of this. We start at 10 after. Doors close at 10 after. 
That does not mean you cannot come in with the doors closed. It just means it's loud out in the hallway. So we, we close the doors at 10 after and by 1230, 1225, 1230, we want all of those things done so that our speaker can have 20 minutes. So then we have a speaker and it's, we try to get somebody from the community, which we, we like to get nonprofits. If we do a brag and a boot, which we learned at, I think it was our regional conference where they pass a pass a hat and you get to brag on whatever. And, and so we let that money roll over. But if we have a nonprofit that is speaking at our meeting, then we will take the money out of the boot we count it so we can tell our treasurer and get points for that, right? But then we give it to that, we give it to that nonprofit right there, cash in their hand as they walk out the door. So that's always pretty cool. And yeah. then we thank the speaker. We give them a gift. We thank our guests again. We do the hand checkers pot. Do y'all, is that every club, does, did they all do that or is it just us? Okay. So when we come in, and this is a great way to get to know your your club as well. When we come in, we pay a dollar and then we shake everybody's hands in the club. If you are the first one there and you're sitting down, then you are responsible for shaking nobody's hands. It, they have to come to you. The, so the last person there is going to shake the most amount of hands. We have a secret handshaker. And when there is, when we draw the handshaker pot, we put half the money in the club, the other half goes to whoever wins the handshaker pot. So kind of like a 50-50. And then we draw, we have little chips with our numbers on it. And we draw and then you get to win that. Oftentimes, if it's a nonprofit that's there, that person will donate their money to that nonprofit as well. If not, you know, happy $22. So that's kind of fun. Um, And then we do, uh, our big hats do a Marlboro, which... I don't know if y'all are familiar with that. And we draw that every week as well. And it's a, I'm going to tell it the best I can. You buy 10 tickets, $5. There's marbles, different colors. Each one means something. You can draw in, you can get your, your nothing. Yay. I've got to play. If your number, if your ticket is called, you draw a marble with something on it and you can get your $5 back. Or you can split the money that's in there. We do the same thing, kind of half it. So I think today's was worth $244 and that's still what's in there. So um, I would tell you more about that, except for that I my car, my money, my little ticket has never been drawn. I've never seen the marbles. I'm not okay. real sure that it's a real game. So there's that. And then five, 10 till we adjourn the meeting so that then everybody can get back to to their business and we have not, it's run very efficiently and that way nobody's wasted their time. You do get, I mean, people can show up at 1130 to start eating lunch if they want to, it's a buffet, but so if they want to show up early and visit, they can, but if you are there because this is a business club to you and this is what you have time, that's what we do. If we, for some reason, do not have club for Martin Luther King Day, because we, we meet on a college campus, we meet at Texas Tech. Go Raiders um, campus. And so sometimes they're not open. And so we'll have a social that week and and get together in the evening with a cocktail or two. So that's it. Is that what you wanted from me? Yep, that's it. So, okay. you know, I've been to your meeting several times and um, always um, it's always starts on time and ends on time. And there are some chapters out there that are struggling with that. And I think it's because they don't have a set agenda or sometimes it's the way it's laid out too. Like you guys are in rounds separated where, you know, like my chapter, sometimes our tables used to be in a U and then people would gather on both sides and then we'd have discussions across yeah. the tables at the other end of the room pretty soon you've lost the meaning. And so um, we started closing our circle into a square. So that didn't happen because, you know, we all know what happens when those side conversations start happening, then nobody can hear anything. Um, do any of you have any questions for Katie? Yeah. You got any questions? I can solve the problems of the world. <laughs> well, I've been to, um, I think everybody's meeting that's on, on right now. 
and uh, they all ran really well. So the people in this room are not having the problems that the chapters that I'm talking about are having. So thank you for coming on, Katie. I, I appreciate it. Of course. Um, thank you. If you guys think of anything else, you can ask her later. So we're going to jump right in with Scott to the nitty gritty and the all the legal stuff and the important stuff. Well, thank you for having me here. Unfortunately, I do like talking about these things quite a bit. And so I'm always there. If anybody has any questions now or later, feel free. Um, but I've also even sort of changed my idea of this. She asked me to talk about the bylaws and the policies. And I really want to make this and turn it into more risk management. Because that's really what what obeying your bylaws and policies avoids is that risk management. Because remember that we are all acting, everybody on the board specifically is acting in the best interest of a nonprofit, a, a public charity for lack of other word, for another word. So we really must conform to whatever rules that we have established uh, and then we'll be okay. And, that's the, and remember that this, anytime that any chapter risk any negative publicity affects more than just your chapter so it's not just about you when we start talking about these things it's about all of ambux so um it, it is pretty important i do recommend that you find a copy of your chapter's bylaws somewhere hopefully somebody in your chapter has them if they do not i bet you jessica has the last copy that was sent to them doesn't mean it was the last one approved or whatever but if there is no other uh, copy, that's the one that we need to go back to. Print, off, print that off and provide it to every member of your board and ask them to at least read it. Typically, they're only about eight or 10 pages. It's not like it's a hard read. And that way, everybody understands what the purpose or, or, or what the structure of your chapter is being ran. If you don't find bylaws, I know that we have recently put together or a committee has put together a new copy of a, a bylaw template. Now, that template wasn't designed for every chapter to go around and start adopting those. It is for chapters that do not have them to give you ideas of what should be contained within your bylaws. So take a look at them if you don't have a copy or if after my next little statement, you think it might be time to update your bylaws. So bylaws, the purpose of them is an ongoing document. It's nothing that you should be passing and changing every year or anything like that. The concept is that once you have established bylaws, that that is pretty well unchanged for quite some time. I mean, they should be reviewed, you know, every now and then, but it's nothing that you want to go through and start changing. So in the past, it was common to put your meeting place in the bylaws. Well, that's a thing that can change quite frequently. We don't want to have to amend the bylaws because we decided to meet at a different facility on a regular basis. We don't want to change the bylaws because you have to raise dues. So things like that that used to be in the old bylaws really should be reconsidered and really amend the ones you have. Or like I said, look at our template, maybe just adopt a full new set of bylaws and take that type of stuff out of your bylaws. That is a perfect use of our policies. And we've had a committee meeting for the last several months that has actually created, there again, another template of chapter policies that you should consider. There again, we're not trying to establish this is what everybody must do, but we are trying to give everybody an idea of what can be done, what can be contained within these documents for you to consider how it impacts your local chapter. So that's really what I was talking about. They're out there. Uh, very few chapters have policies. I, I should say that. That's something that most chapters should do. But a lot of those chapters that don't have policies also still say where do they meet in the bylaws that says how much their dues in their bylaws, which I bet you the majority of those dues are no longer paying those rates. Um, and, you know, those type of information. Now, on the, on the bylaw specifically, we're not saying that you need, if you happen to have where your place, uh, your meeting place must be approved by the board, must be approved by your membership. We're not saying that stuff has to come out of your bylaws. That's perfectly fine for those rules, whatever you deem appropriate to be in the bylaws. We just don't want the end result of those to maybe have to be maintained and your bylaws have to be updated on a regular basis because you've decided to change 
different aspects of the organization that do not materially change the organization. One other thing that I do want to sort of mention, or, or I say one, a couple of things. We are very mission focused. Every, just about every AMBUC member you will ever speak to is about making a difference in the community. The challenge sometimes that we forget is that to make a difference, we still must do it with proper policies and procedures. An Amtrak, everybody wants to give an Amtrak. That kid looks so cute. Let's go get him an Amtrak. Well, has a therapist actually determined if a th with an Amtrak would be beneficial or could it be harmful to the person? So while we're always focused on trying to make our community better, remember there are reasons why we have established processes to do this, specifically the Amtrak. Needs to be fitted by a therapist. So that may we make sure that we know that we're doing good and not harm. When you deliver an Amtrak, always deliver with two Ambucks. You know, there again, it's all risk management. We're not saying that anybody's bad, but all somebody has to do is accuse somebody being bad, and then all of Ambucks now looks bad. I'll also step back into the treasures. I don't know who else is talking, so I might be stepping on their toes. I don't know. But treasures report, one thing that we have been preaching now for quite some time is that your treasurer's report should be presented at, at, at least once a month at every board meeting, assuming you're meeting monthly as you should, or once a quarter if that's how your, cha your chapter is organized. But when that treasurer's report is presented, a copy of the bank statement, the most current bank statement to that report should be contained as part of that treasurer's report and then have a reconciliation from the balance on that bank statement to whatever the report shows as cash. It, you might get your bank statement at the first and not have your meeting until the end of the month. That's fine. Take that bank statement, explain outstanding deposits, explain outstanding disbursements that haven't cleared the bank or had not cleared the bank on the first up until your report date, whatever it is. And we're not accusing treasurers of being crooked or anything like that, we are giving them the rounds that they cannot be accused of it. Because now we pro they provide the documentation to the entire board. This is what it is. Talk to me now if you disagree. Here's the proof. Don't come back to me in a, in a you know six months saying how I stole money because it's on here. You had the chance to look at it every single month um, or whatever it is. So that's where we'll all stop with bylaws, policies, risk management. But you know we are still a business. And anytime that you conform outside of your bylaws or policies, you're subjecting your, your chapter, your individual members on the board to potential consequences for you know, whatever you might be doing. People are giving us money and we must maintain that money properly. I'll shut up and let's see if anyone has questions or just move on. Anybody have any questions for Scott? I like the direction that you took that, Scott. I would add on that same breath, just make sure your events are in insured. Yes. Make sure you understand our insurance and what it covers. That was That's a good thought. Yeah. Yes. If you guys have uh, meetings outside of your normal, you need to check with national and um, make sure that you're covered with insurance. And if it's not under the blanket policy, you might have to have an additional rider, which are very cheap. We buy one every year for our AMBUC fun day. And um, if you guys do change your bylaws, you do have to send those to Jessica so she can get them refiled. But don't do them just because your meeting date's changed. IRS isn't gonna know where, where, where you're meeting and when you're meeting. Nor do they care. <laughs> No, they don't. They don't. So. And, and I guess on that process, which I forgot to mention, is that as a chapter of the national organization, your bylaws de technically must be approved by Jessica. Just don't think you can go out and make changes, and this is the way it is. You must send them in to, to Jessica. She must basically approve them and send them back to you as your new rules. Yes. And thanks for talking about the financial, because I had that on my list. If you didn't cover, I was like... Yes, make sure. If you guys, any of you have had my treasures training, you know why I say, yeah, bank statements. Um, you know, you might trust that treasure. I trust, trusted ours for two years and uh, it's just daughter from another mother. So it, she has some money. We, we, generally speaking, every handbook is good. Sometimes they get in bad situations or whatever. Uh, I haven't been, I mean, I've been, 
part of the national board in some form or fashion for what six or eight years it feels like maybe longer i bet you it's happened about every other year a chapter has some issue sometimes it's very small sometimes it's a concern versus a problem mm -hmm. but it happens on a regular basis so we all must do our due diligence it's very common with nonprofits because we're so loose. Most of them are so loose with money that, you know, here's some cash and, oh, I need milk. I'll take a $20 bill. Pretty soon that $20 bill is $100 bill. So if you guys don't have that policy, you guys really need to make sure your treasurer is, is doing that. I mean, it's for them too. That way somebody can't claim, hey, we, she just took a trip. I wonder if Ambux paid for that. You know, if you're showing those reconciliation statements at the meeting, they don't have a leg to stand on. So any questions for Scott before we move on? Any questions for Scott before we move on? <laughs> Thank you, Scott. All right. That was Donna and then robot Donna. I know that was funny. <laughs> Okay, committees, my favorite subject because so many chapters out there, a lot of them use them, a lot of them don't. Sometimes we get some A personalities, um, which I'm part of that group that sometimes I just want to do it all myself because I know it'll get done. But Donna, tell us why we need committees and how can we make them work? Okay, well, I was very excited when Donna H. and I were together for a long time, and we started talking about committees because I am passionate about committees. I love committees. I think they are the lifeblood of any organization you're in. Uh, but of course, right now, I'm really focused on Ambux. <clears throat> a good committee takes the stress off of everyone, especially those who like to uh, be in charge of the committee and maybe do it all that really doesn't work very well. It might work for a year or so, but then things start to happen. That particular person has burnout. Uh, people stop participating because they're not involved. People want, they join AMBUX to do something. It is our responsibility as officers or as other members, <clears throat> especially if you're their uh, if, you're, if you're the person who brought them in, I, I call that a mentor. If you're their mentor, then you are responsible for helping them find things to do. And committee work is the best way to start out. Uh, committees teach members. Uh, it grooms members for leadership roles. When I'm on a committee, um, I look around and I say, hmm, who's participating and who's doing what? What are their, um, what are their strengths? because you always want to feed into someone's strength. Uh, to do that, it, it elevates them and gives them ownership and then they wanna do more and more and more. And it spreads the work out. Everybody gets to do something. Of course, as everyone knows, when a new member comes in, they need to be put on a committee right away and then ask them to do things. Make sure you don't leave them off. Uh, if they're kind of shy and quiet, you may have to call them. We have to say, because sometimes emails, they won't respond to texts, maybe. Sometimes people need that personal invitation or call them and say, you know, I was thinking about this idea for the project. What do you think about it? You bring, you bring out their ideas and their thoughts. You can also do that at a face-to-face -face meeting, but we've kind of gotten away from a lot of face-to-face -face meetings. People don't have time. So sometimes there'll be Zoom or there'll be email meetings. Trust me, uh, being an AMBUC for almost 30 years, probably done every kind of meeting you could ever imagine. <laughs> and it all works. And being on committees is great fun. Uh, oftentimes you become better friends when you're on a committee together. You start doing things together and maybe you'll go out and have a coffee because you're gonna go pick up 20 items for the raffle or something like that. So, or you'll have lunch together. Uh, it, it creates that, bond that shoulders together is another uh, positive for the committee. Um, it helps bring in fresh ideas. So how do we do all this committee work? Because, you know, those are nice examples that I gave kind of uh, generalized things. There are a lot of ways you can run a committee. Uh, we do have, or the kinds of committees, our chapters might be five people 
or they might be over 100 people. That is a broad, broad spectrum there. So we'll talk about some small chapters to begin with. Um, there is a um, <clears throat> committee uh, form, uh, not form, uh, guideline on the website. If you go to the hub, go to resources, go to officer education and scroll down to the 10th line, you will find chapter committee guidelines. Now these are pretty old, but the bases are still there, okay? You know, the, the, what we really need is still there. Uh, it does say it's going to be revised. And I just think that's a wonderful thing that is probably gonna be put in the works this year, because again, I'm coming into office and I love committees. <laughs> So I'm probably going to set up a committee for committees. Um, so it talks about four basic committees, fun, information, service, and friendship. If you're a small chapter and you're just starting, those are kind of guidelines to help maybe you organize and put things together. And then once you've done a few things, you're going to figure out, oh, well, our fun is a social at Mike's Grill every other month. Um, so you may need a specific committee and you might call it, you know, the social committee for Mike's Grill or something like that. The fundraiser, you're, you're selling baked goods. You may have to have a committee for that. And you get people on there. You ask the people, if you're the committee chair, ask them to do things, have an agenda. Every meeting, no matter if it's a board meeting or a, a general ambux meeting or a committee meeting, an agenda is imperative. Be timely. I, I was going kudos to Katie. I love it when a meeting can start on time. And if you have an ending time, like your chapter does, I personally love one hour meetings. I feel like we can grab people's attention that long. Uh, really about 18 minutes is what all the studies say, but we're, we're on bucks. We're going to do better than that. <laughs> um, so a uh, one hour committee, although I know the committee we worked on this year, we'd get into that meet and we were just working and producing. So sometimes the a committee meeting will last longer, but try to focus on a shorter time. And if you're really hitting bullet points and you're staying on task, then, and people have the time, then I say, go for it. All right, let me check my notes before we skip on to something else. Um, okay, those are the notes from that. Uh, again, we do that, we do that. Uh, okay. Um, just make sure every new member gets put on a committee. We want them to learn how to do things. We want them to learn from each other and from uh, us. I love, I love having new people on committees because of the fresh ideas. Uh, that really keeps a project or an activity current and people come and, and and work together that way. Um, and that's pretty much what I have in my notes. Do you have some questions? Because there's so much we could talk about. I think you did a great job, Donna. Um, Thank you. I'll just add one of the things, keep in mind too, she did a great job. Um, you know, make sure that you know what your members joined your chapter for. You know, is, is Scott joined my chapter because he likes to build Amtrikes, which I know he does and does it well. And I assign him to be on the scrapbooking committee. You think he's going to stay in my chapter? First of all, he's going to make his wife do it. But you get the idea. If people come into your chapter to do community service, make sure that they're doing community service. If they want to build Amtrikes, get them on the Amtrike you know, committee, find out what their interests are, because you're going to lose them if you don't put them to work where their interests are at. So. Yes. Well, one point I have uh, to add to that, I, I was alluding to it, and I didn't know if I should really go into that more, uh, is that one of the chapters I belong to <clears throat> has a specific piece of paper, and it lists all of the, um, all the committees we have, which are a lot. This will, I'll talk about Danville for a second, because it's a large chapter. And I didn't really go into large chapters much. Uh, so we have so many different committees and we ask a new member to check, you know, their first, their top three. 
And then we talk to them and usually we put them on the, their top one just because that way we think they will participate. But maybe that is something that other chapters might want to do as well. So when they join, have a list of your chapters, or, I'm sorry, of your committees. And that way they can choose their own committee. Uh, and then you can put them on there and make sure that they're contacted. Good points. Yep. And if your committees are planning and their committee meetings and just bringing a short uh, report to their to your chapter meeting, then you can be like Katie's chapter is and be done on time instead of coming to the committee and asking everybody, hey, what do you think we should do next month for fun? You know, so. OK, anybody have any questions or anything that you want to add to that? I'll just say thank you, Donna, for asking me to be on the committee last year for the what was the mid, the uh, review committee. So, I uh, that was my first Ambox National Committee to be part of. It was because you asked me to be part of the how to put the plan for planning regional conferences. Oh, cool. Oh, good. See, you just never know when you ask somebody to do something; they're gonna appreciate it. Okay, if we're done, we guys can, if you have questions later, put them in the chat or ask later. We're going to move on. Um, Amy, you can unmic your mic, and she's going to talk about collaborating with other nonprofit organizations. Sure. All right, just um, I think it's a great way to get extra funding and extra hands to help with service. And so you can look at other partners in your local community like the Lions, the La Sertoma, Rotary, churches, local colleges. But of course, my favorite topic is Kiwanis. So I want to focus specifically around how to partner with a Kiwanis club. And uh, so one of the things about Kiwanis, and I'll just give you a little bit of background with Kiwanis. So 138,000 members, so a little bit larger than than Ambux, and we have about 7,800 clubs around the world, and we're in 82 nations. Uh, so it, just to give you a little bit for size scale, but our focus is uh, young children priority one. So we do children's services from zero to 18 as a primary focus area, which aligns very closely with the work that when I was serving as governor for Kiwanis, I made it my project to partner with Ambux. And so I gave away a ton of Amtrak's. Um, and it meets a service initiative. <laughs> Excuse me. And it meets a fundraising. So our clubs do a lot of fundraising. So they're always looking for hands-on service and uh, are raising funds to, to donate. So... <laughs> Excuse me. Um, so my only suggestion for you would be do some homework, find out who the president is of your local chapter, and find out what types of things and projects and services activities that they're engaged in uh, Ambux meetings, uh, volunteer to come and speak at one of their Kiwanis meetings. Um, actually, I suggested this for Alex in uh, Pennsylvania, and they did a joint meeting together <coughs> in which both clubs came together, and they met together, and one organization shared what Kiwanis does, and the other one shared what Ambux does with the idea that they could exchange ideas because they were both serving their local community. So hosting a joint committee, a joint meeting is a great way to engage uh, to a bike giveaway. Of course, that is the best way to one, get new members and new members. Um, uh, both districts and international grants that are available for Kiwanis clubs. So that can also augment uh, anywhere we've had great success. Our, in Ohio, we've probably, par in partnership, given away more than 170 Amtrak's in the last decade. Um, our Kentucky, Tennessee Kwan have engaged heavily with the Bluegrass chapter um, with Joyce Pete um, and have given away, it made, it was a governor's project for Ohio, it was a governor's project for Kentucky, Tennessee Kwanis side. Um, in Pennsylvania, as I mentioned, they just got partnered up in the past few years to see how they can work together. 
I, I had a gentleman that used to be in Ambux be, end up as president of a Qantas club in Nevada, and he called National, who deferred them to me, and he said, I, I have funds, and I would like to do an Amtrak project. And I said, well, how much funds have, do you have? And he had between eight and $10,000 that he wanted to allocate specifically for starting an Amtrak project. And so there are <laughs> excuse me, the funds are out there. I spoke with um, my Kiwanis in Australia in October, and they were, they were ready to give them away in Australia. I said, well, Ambex is not in Australia, but if you want to start a chapter, it sounds like there are Kiwanis that are very interested there as well in doing the therapeutic tricycle. Um, so it's really a matter, as Scott mentioned, um, bringing it back and making sure that they understand how they can support you. Um, so in some cases, they may have a child identified. So showing them how to use the forms and how to protect themselves. So working with the physical therapist, giving them ideas of how to raise funds, because obviously I've found whenever you have a need, the funds always will appear. Um, and, and the stronger the need, the, the quicker the funds will appear, as you, as you know. Um, and so sharing that your passion with them just gives us a great new way to bring even more people along in the Amtrak and the Ambux journey. Are there, did I miss anything? No. Okay. Uh, Mom managed a lot of, she was project manager for a lot of the projects that we did. Uh, my dad assembled a lot of them um, when I was governor. And so, but we track, uh, we had to track where they were going, where the funds were coming in, et cetera. Um, and that the bikes were assembled and delivered or delivered and assembled because um, it can go either way. Um, but just the, not Ambux, um, so they don't know all the backgrounds and the arms and the bylaws. So, um, but you can help them, and so it's a it's a great way. They're always looking for projects um, that are in that area of helping children, especially around health and nutrition, um, education and literacy. And uh, we have a service leadership program, so which involves children um, leading their own projects. And so if you do need um, people to help put together Amtrax, um, sometimes our high school students called Key Clubbers um, or, or Circle Kers or our college version of uh, Kiwanis. Um, and some of you may have been in one of those. Um, I know Steve Davis from the Michigan chapter reminds me how he got into service was through a Circle K meeting. Donna was in a Circle K as well. Um, so yeah, it's a great way. Um, you never know path or which nonprofit where people are going to end up as adults so um, but yeah we do have service leadership programs that you can engage if you want to look on the um, you'll find example after example where Kiwanis Amtrak's Kiwanis Ambux um, you'll find numerous examples of where we partner together any questions great Thank you, Donna, for the opportunity to share. Well, thank you. I appreciate If you appreciate have questions you. later or you're thinking about Yeah, I was going to say, if you do have questions later about approaching, and I do have a directory of every club uh, around the, the world, um, so I can help you get connected. Um, I appreciate it. Thank you. Well, thanks for coming on. I think we forget about, you know, we're always raising money for ourselves. We never think about another organization may want to want to help us. I know in my chapter, we don't have Kiwanis here, but we have actually helped fund projects for the Rotary. So it bo works both ways. So um, any questions? Not, I am going to turn it over to Mike McCann. And he's going to talk about working with other agencies. And he is a pro at that. So Welcome, Mike. Hey, sorry, I was late. We had our uh, board meeting tonight, so we actually installed our new officers and inducted three new members and uh, trying to get our bowl of Palooza going. So um, it's uh, it was a fun evening. So I said, I got to go. Uh, so I let Kevin hand over the reins after 14 years. And uh, wow. so that, that was a big moment for him. As you know, Kevin's been a part of Ambuck for about 25 years now, and he served about 13 or 14 as his president. So uh, I handed the baton with um, some big shoes to fill, and, and I'm excited to see what our club's going to do. So, you know, one of the things that we have done, I think, pretty well in Savannah is partnering with our city and our county um, officials. 
Um, we had some projects that we wanted to do, some inclusionary things that we'd like to see around the city. So that was super excited. Our, our playground that we've been pretty um, proud of in the last couple of years, we started around COVID. And we just went to the um, elected officials and started conversations with them and, and said, you know, hey, um, we would like to partner with you um, and, and help bring awareness to not only what we're doing, but also to the need for uh, adaptive playgrounds and, and and better adaptive playgrounds, not just to say, hey, there's a turfist material, so a child's safe, but to, to really throw in some pieces that were unique to inclusionary program uh, playgrounds. So we did a... Um, a zip line, um, which was really neat. In fact, Jessica's daughter got to be the, the first one to go across it during our regional conference. Uh, and then we've got the area's first wheelchair swing um, that Kevin was very adamant that he wanted to be a piece of it. And what we found is, is that it kind of helps us promote the brand of Ambuck. Um, I moved to Savannah five years ago and the dealership that I was with said, hey, we sponsor a nonprofit. Um, called Ambucks, and I had never even heard of it. I did look at it. There were chapters in the Midwest, but I had never heard of Ambuck. And so it was um, it was it was kind of neat to to get involved in that organization and see the people we serve and see how appreciative they were. But it's also hard as a nonprofit to really get your name out and um, and visibility because you know we have Low Country Down Syndrome that does a good job around here. We have some autism groups that do a good job around here. And so we were challenged with like, what do we do and how do we partner with people that can help us in our exposure? And the, the county and city officials, we found are great partners. Um, we attend city council meetings. We attend county council meetings. Uh, we make sure we include them when we're talking about where we would like to see things like the playground. And now the cities came to us and said, hey, we saw what you did on the county playground. We'd like to see if you want to partner with us on a city playground. And um, so those things are nice because... Uh, you know, I say I'm a part of nine non-for-profit boards and AMBUC is the one that we have to spend the least amount of time raising money on. Uh, in fact, we realized a couple of years ago, one of our biggest challenges is where to spend the money. And what I think I've appreciated about some of these chapter chats and, and the national meetings and regional meetings was is hearing some of the other side of the things that we don't focus on as much, I think, because the money comes pretty easy in Savannah. Um, so being more intentional with it, uh, making sure that the money that we do spend is is targeted towards our our market and and our people that we want to serve, but then also getting people like our Bolapalooza, which is why our meeting was so long today. That's coming up next month. Um, that one fundraiser will raise us a couple hundred thousand dollars in the year, and you don't do that without great support and promotion from people that are connected in in your area and your community. So. Not being scared to go to your elected officials, getting them on board. Um, we, with the city of Tybee, we partner with them on the new beach wheelchair program. And Wally, who is on the city code enforcement, has joined our AMBUC board. Um, he got to the meeting tonight and said, hey, by the way, I got a check for $5,000 the other day from a local business out on Tybee Island that wants to give to our Beachable Tybee initiative. So, you know, I think that um, realizing that we can't do it all ourselves that in a way um, we do compete with other nonprofits. We do compete with other organizations that are trying to also serve and do good and find a niche within your community. Um, the, the people that these people get voted in by when they see your county, you know, your district six representative is supporting your initiative, then you also gain all his followers. Um, so I think a lot of that and bringing them in and getting them connected and making sure we always invite them to our trike giveaways. We invite them to our bowl palooza. Uh, we make sure we get them involved in our social media posts. And, you know, that's, that's how, you know, networking, um, with social media is, is a great tool to do that. So, um, you know, when you'd asked me, I didn't really prepare a lot to, to, uh, talk about on that, but I think just, Knowing what's going on with your community, knowing where the needs are, um, partnering with your your city and your county as they look at bringing new things to recreational services in your area um, is important. And they will always, always, always accept the money. Um, so, you know, you don't have to worry about that. And, and I mean, let's face it, there's not much more of a feels good um initiative than what we work with what the people that we serve and the communities that we offer services to 
you can't go to a trike giveaway or or go to one of our beachable Tybee days and see those folks that, you know, we take for granted going to the beach. If I said, hey, let's do a beach destination, you know, meeting, we're just going to think about going to the, getting on the sand and getting in the water. And, and for some people, that's not reality. Um, and now with Ambuck in the city of Tybee, that is a reality. And they can now take a vacation and not just go to the beach, but they can get in the water. Um, and we couldn't have done that without the partnership of, of City of Tybee. And and now, like, there's, I mean, their social media is all about Ambuck. Um, so I think that uh, getting those partnerships and, and, you know, nurturing those relationships with your county and your city and elected officials, your mayors need to be on board, um, getting them to know what Ambuck is um, and getting them to to attend things is really important. That's really good advice because I think a lot of us don't think about that. And then when we want to do something, they don't know who we are. So thank you, Mike. You did a great job. Does anybody have any questions or to ask Mike? No, I wanted to check yep. in. It's Terry from Edmond and Scott may be able to chime in a little bit more. But uh, you talked about city officials, but we've been trying to work really closely with our parks and rec department for the city. Um, trying to rebuild our playground. Um, have you had much success in that? But Scott, if you need to chime in as well, thank you. So the part that we just did, we did with the collaboration with the county, with Chatham County. Um, I'm also actually the president of, of Little League in our area. And we have a beautiful ballpark facility. It's got four baseball fields. One of them, we talked to City three years ago as we re redid the fields to put in a turf field. Um, so we now offer Challenger League, which some areas call Miracle League out in the Midwest um, baseball. So every Sunday, our AMBUC um, kids, you know, or, or any kids with inclusionary issue or, you know, um, whether it be, I got a couple of players that are nonverbal, I got a couple in power chairs, you know, they come and play baseball. So we thought that was a great place also to have a playground for them. And we went to the county and of course a playground of any merit whatsoever is going to be five or six hundred thousand dollars. And the county's like, well, you know, we don't have half a million dollars sitting in that account just right out for a playground. So we said, well, what if we come up with half? And they say, you come up with half, you'll have a playground. Um, COVID hit right at that exact same time. So it was, it was delayed a little bit, but we actually broke ground on it in uh, January. Um, the, the playground pieces were installed in, I believe, March, and the turf will go down this week. Um, and we found that they are more than willing to work with you. I also do serve on the City of Savannah Sports and Recreation Board, and I can tell you what sometimes gets in the way is we think of parks and rec and we either think of a playground or we think of maybe a certain sport that we're participating in. But when you get into the parks and rec side, there really there's so many buckets that they have to monitor and, and supply money to that um, being very intentional with your ask um, and coming to them with a the plan is, is the absolute first and most important thing to do because they're going to go back to their city council members um, and say, hey, we got a group that would like to do this. And the more information and more tools you give them to load their mouth with and, and be able to answer those questions, um, the more likely the elected officials will be to get behind it. And then also, like I said earlier, get them elected officials to come to your events. That, that cannot be overlooked anywhere because... I would venture to say a lot of your elected officials do not even know what AMBUC does or the community we serve. So getting them to your events, even if it's a, like our bowl of Palooza, our, our board will buy a table and we'll make sure that three or four elected officials are at that table um, because they're, they're going to be your biggest advocate when it comes to where that tax money goes. Um, part of this playground is being sponsored by a T-Splost, which is a special um, allocated sales tax. And if I wouldn't have been connected with the city officials, we probably wouldn't have got that money. So getting them to understand what you're doing, that you're not just coming to them asking for money um, is very, very vital in getting there. They get asked for money every day. Yeah, I agree. And I also think you need to be careful of who you send to represent your organization and talk about them. Like, we don't all have a mic, 
I do know of an organization that happens to be in my town that went to the park and rec guy and just kind of demanded things. And you know what? There's a big wall up now. Oh, no. Um, yeah. And they can't get anything. I mean, it's awful. Luckily, they like the charity angels because we say, no, we don't care if we have signage. We'll build stuff. Yeah. But it's bad. You you got to go in and be humble and remember that you're really a nobody in their world. And, and you know, yeah. Well, and realizing um, that, that one of the things we had to get baseball parents to realize is, is that there's not just youth baseball, right? There's adult baseball, there's co-ed baseball, there's softball, there's pickleball, there's basketball, there's tennis, there's swimming, there's soccer. There's so many things that they're being asked for money for. You just got to be very intentional with your ask. So yeah. Do you want to add anything before? No, it's and the nice thing is with us, it's really more of a financial side because the, the park, the city wants to build the park. So it's a matter of how can we help? Uh, so we don't, we're not having to ask, we're not having to encourage them to spend the money. Now we might have to encourage them to spend how much money, uh, but it's all about how much can we raise? Mm -hmm. Yeah, in Ponca City, it wasn't even a money thing that the Ponca City New Nambucks had all the money to um, build a you know, pavilion and this and that. But the person that went in there had the philosophy it's better to ask for forgiveness then. And um, that's not the case because, you know, the next time they want to do something, you know what they're going to be told? No. So it's better to put everything up front, like Mike says, plan, present. And uh, don't do something other than what you say you're going to do. Yeah, I just want to add that uh, first, uh, what Mike talked about with his playground and uh, baseball field complex, that is an absolutely amazing complex. And if you're ever in the Savannah area, make sure you stop in, get somebody from Savannah and Bucks and, and go visit it because it's truly amazing. Uh, and, and then I just, you know, we just uh, opened, uh, I think, last, or the weekend before last, we opened another accessible playground in Lawton. And the three Lawton Ambux chapters, the Parks and Rep Recreation, local business people, uh, all the funding came from uh, funds raised and everything. And, and we were just able to do that. But uh, but it, it really took all three uh, Lawton chapters and the Parks and Recreation, the city of Lawton to have buy-in that uh, it was something that was needed. Yeah, that's great. It's a great park. And when I was in uh, Texas last week, I was at Lubbock Cap Rocks. Was it Lub Lubbock Cap? One of the Lubbock chapters. Sorry, I went to so many meetings last week. And um one of the members there was actually an employee from the Parks and Rec in Canyon, which is like 30 minutes down the road. And the mayor of Canyon came up to um, Amarillo there to thank them for putting in a new park there. So they were even um, working with another city and obviously they had him come to the meeting. So Southwest Ant Bucks is who that was. Thank you. Yeah, yep. it was. You're right. My brain is very fuzzy right now. Too many chapters in one week. Um, but that thank again you, is another part, too, that um, was collaborated with lots of different agencies and other organizations, Lions Club, et cetera. Because when they dedicated that park, there were so many different organizations that really were a part of it. So that goes right along with what Amy's yeah. saying and Mike are saying. Yeah, you're right. And they have sign up there with all those different agencies listed. It was really nice. It's a nice park. Well, I appreciate you, Mike. I appreciate all of you that came on today. It's a kind of a small group, and most of you know how to run great chapters. But the nice thing about these chapter chats, they're recorded. So if you have new officers, you can uh, suggest they look at it or committee people. Um, thank you for getting on here because... We are stronger together. We learn more by sharing ideas and learning from each other and, and sharing what works and what doesn't work, the good and the bad. So anybody have any questions for any of our presenters? Well, we are done. Question. Maybe this was some, we're done. I, I actually, oh, have I, I think oh, Pam has a question. I actually have 
I think Pam has a question. Yeah, if I can unmute. You're unmuted. I'm just going to mute me so I don't hear the echo. Go ahead You're and ask muted. Pam. I'm just going to mute me so I don't hear the echo. Go ahead and ask Pam. Is it unmuted? Yes. Okay, I'm sorry. What I was going to ask is on the insurance, we recently acquired an AM shop. Is there a certain coverage amount that Ambux would require that we carry? You said you acquired an AM shop? Yes, we're renting a building and we're mm -hmm. building Amtrites out of it with our members. So no. right now we're in the process of making sure we have coverage on that. Yeah. We do not have a minimum amount on a building or an AM shop. Uh, you're probably going to run into that, though, with the place where you're renting it from. They're probably going to require a minimum in product liability. So the big thing that Ambux Thank is going to be you. covering is your is your mm -hmm. personal liability and all that, not so much the contents. Yeah. You'll just want to work with a local insurance agent to get your contents insured appropriately. But as far as any stipulations from us, we're not going to put that on you, Pam. Thanks so much. You're welcome. How come when Jessica talks, it doesn't echo, but Scott and I, it does. I guess you guys need to hear us twice. <laughs> I don't know. Maybe the internets are running a little smoother in North Carolina versus Oklahoma tonight. <laughs> Maybe. Maybe. You're not Any echoing other... right now, though. No. I wonder if Pam's got two, um, two computers or a phone and a computer. A lot of times if you have two... Um, things logged on at the same time in the same room you get an echo from the other machine anybody have any other questions it doesn't have to be about what we talked about today if you have issues um and want some advice or input about running your chapters this is a great group to help you out doesn't sound like it i would well, just say um set goals that's really a good place to start. You know, pick out like at last week's meeting, Augusta AM Bucks, we looked at some of the things we accomplished this past year. We gave it one point, we gave away 22 AM trikes. So we set a goal of giving away 25 to 30 this upcoming year. Um, break those break those goals up into discrete tasks and set your committees on them. Don't let a slow start um, keep you from becoming an award-winning chapter. Good advice. I was going to add too. I had it on my list too. Um, when I was chapter president, we used to have the scorecard, which now we have the hub. Um, it takes place of the scorecard. But what I did was I printed out the year new year calendar that is on the hub. I know it's the next year's already available. That has all the deadlines and all the reminders of when <clears throat> recruitment times are and when awards are due and that kind of stuff. And then I would print out the scorecard. So now I print out the, the hub, the chapter planning guide, which is in the resources under chapter education. Um, it does need some corrections. Matt, I'll probably send that to you because it's got um, recruitment in the same in the wrong order, but it's a good start. And I would take that and go, and I would put a calendar together of what, normal fundraisers we have when and that was like in the first page of my my notebook it had everything kind of so i knew i needed to get a committee together a few months out of this event and i could plan ahead instead of all of a sudden going oh my gosh it is june and we normally do this and we haven't done anything yet so planning organizing ahead of time will really help you be successful and less stress Print that out, tailor it for your own chapter's needs. Yeah, yep. 
I'm going to leverage that just a little bit because so many often, you know, even with what we're saying here, we're talking about scoring and points and awards. The purpose of everything that Donna just talked about is not about your recognition. It's about helping you build a better local chapter. So everything that's in what she's talking about, the, got the, the calendars and all that, it's helping you build a local chapter that can be successful as a local chapter, not about who can win the most awards. Exactly. <clears throat> you shouldn't. Right. I mean, it's a great would, tool. It's a great tool. And our chapter never really cared if we were number one or 15 or 20. Our goal was hopefully to be superior, which we didn't do this year, but hopefully it's the only year. But um, our goal was if you do everything on there and have a success, successful year and a well rounded year, um, and just do a little bit more than what you did the year before. So, you're exactly right. I mean, it shouldn't be about the awards. It should be having a, a great chapter, successful year. And it takes planning to do that. You just can't throw it together at the last minute. Anybody else have anything to share? If And one quick thing, if I can, um, as National Big Hat Secretary Treasurer, don't forget, get your big hatters involved and keep your big hat presidents. Um, get them on here. Get them on every chapter chat because they're going to grow and do your best to, to keep them out there and keep them involved. And uh, at that point in time, membership will grow. Thank you. Yeah, it would be nice to get more members on here because that's the way they'll learn, you know, so sharing information helps. So, and I got a plug national conference. I hope I see all of you guys in Tulsa pretty soon. I see, I see fingers. That's good. Hopefully you're recruiting people. I just signed like up today. I was going to awesome. say, I just signed up today myself. So. Oh, great. <laughs> see, Jessica, I told you they'd start. We we're a little worried because it's slow, but you know, everybody has to get to regional conferences I, and then you have to wait till that next paycheck. And last day um, of June, everybody yeah. will be out there because yep. the deadline will have come <laughs> and they'll feel the pressure finally. Yeah, it's going to be a great conference. Jessica and her staff have some great education sessions planned. We have great speakers planned. Um, it's going to be a great time learning on Tulsa time and on Route 66. So um, I hope I see all of you in Tulsa. And uh, it's it's been a great year. And thank you for getting on here. And our next one is, I should remember the name, Adam. It's about visibility, but we haven't uh, got it all planned yet. So um, it's about keeping your chapter visibility. I've asked Adam to talk about different um, social medias, not just Facebook and offer any help. So if you have somebody doing marketing for your chapter or you want to get on there, send somebody to learn more and uh, learn some new tools to get our word out because as Scott and I have talked about for years now, we do not want to be the best kept secret. And we're not. We're getting better. We have 15 new chapters. And some of that's because you guys are sharing your social medias. So thank you so much. And like anybody has any questions, I'm going to say good night. And I will see you down the road. Thanks. Good night, all. Thank you, everybody. Good night. Thank you, everybody that presented. I really appreciate you. Thank Night. you. Good night. Good night.